I'd like to call to order the regular meeting of July 2nd, 2019 of the Chino Valley Planning and Zoning Commission. Vice Chair Armstrong, would you lead us in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have a roll call, please. Okay. Commissioner Welker? Here. Commissioner McGafferty? Here. Commissioner Pysiak? He is not Alternate here. Alternate David Back. Somerville? Here. Somerville. Commissioner Switzer? Here. Commissioner Metters? Here. Vice Chair Armstrong? Here. Chair Merritt? Here. Thank you. Thank you for being here tonight, Mr. Summerfield. Oh, my pleasure. Okay, we'll move on to item four, which is consideration of possible action to approve the June 4th, 2019 meeting minutes. Do we have any questions? Has everybody had an opportunity to read the minutes? I make a motion to accept the minutes as printed. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion, any questions, any concerns? All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Okay, we have uh, item five, staff reports. Commission, I just, uh, to give you a heads up that next uh, Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, uh, we will be bringing you an item. We've been working on the UDO tax amendment for a while now, specifically the sign code. And uh, we've had several sit downs with the UDO committee. Um, and that should be coming forward to the commission next, next month. And Will we have a study session or anything? Because I know the sign code business is kind of complicated. And, and that's the reason that we, we have the UDO subcommittee meeting. The, 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 the Basically, we sit down with them and do the revisions with them. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. So we'll move forward to item 6A, consideration of possible action regarding a request for a conditional use permit to allow the use of an automotive repair and automobile sales within the commercial light zoning district. The one acre Property is located 0.33 miles north of the northeast corner of Road 2 North and State Route 89 at 1351 State Route 89. Alex? Just a few, a few corrections uh, here on the staff report, um, the first page of the staff report. For owner of record, it, it is not the town of Chino Valley, that's the applicant or the property owner. It is uh, a Federwich Living Trust, and the applicant is Raymond Federwich. Just a correction on that. <coughs> so the subject property is located approximately 0.3 miles uh, north of Road 2 North and State Route 89 at 1351 North State Route 89. As you see here in the vicinity map, <coughs> the property is located in the commercial corridor along State Route 89. To the north, we have Rogers Automotive. To the south, we have uh, Mary's Cozy Home Furnishing. At adjacent to the street, we have uh, directly adjacent, we have Serge's Tires. Uh, further south, Primrose and an RV and store it mini storage. And further south, we have Chino, uh, Chino Valley Park. The property is made up of one acre. It's a one acre lot. Um, it is currently zoned commercial light. Uh, within the general plan, 
it has the land use designation of commercial multifamily residential. Existing use on, on the property right now is, is uh, strictly residential. Um, improvements to the side, we have a commercial building to the, to the west of the property. Uh, we have a accessory building and then we have a residence to, to the rear of the property. The next few slides that I'm gonna be showing is just uh, uh, pictures of the interior of the actual <coughs> r residence so you can see um, at a street view what exactly is within the property. So here, uh, picture A, B, and C is, is looking from the northwest corner of the property. Uh, we're looking at the north property, looking at the north property line going eastbound. We're looking at inside the property. Here is the, the commercial building. And here to the back, we can see the accessory building. And then we're looking at the front of the property going this way. Here we're standing at the southwest corner of the property. And again, we're looking at the south property line, looking eastbound. Again, we're looking at in the interior of the, of the site. And again, we see the commercial building. And then again, we're looking at a north direction And here we just see uh, the main access to the build to to the to the property is within this driveway. So we're just looking again at the at the side of the commercial building and an accessory building. We're looking in between the accessory building and the commercial building here, and then we're looking at the back here where we can see the actual residence. So as you can see here, these are a little bit darker. Uh, well, the time I was taking these pictures, the sun was actually above the cloud, so <clears throat> we, we really didn't have the right lighting for it. But what I, what I wanted uh, the commission to see here within uh, uh, picture B and C is that he does have <clears throat> this portion of the property enclosed with a fence. It is fenced here and here, and the whole rear of the property is fenced off. Uh, currently, he has a three-foot wall that's going along the the south property line and then on the north property line he has it is fenced off up to this point right here and we're talking about probably a five to six foot uh, wooden wooden fence and here's just some here's uh, three other pictures here we're seeing uh, the front of the property uh, from across the street from Sergio's Tires. As we can see here, um, he has two driveways. He has an Angus Eagles driveway on this side, on the north north portion, or uh, this side of the property line. And on the southwest portion, he has another driveway now, which is just for Angus. And we'll be coming back to that as well. And then here, we can see that the initial stages of a, of a block wall, a three foot block wall, and we'll be touching base on that as well. So this is what the project consists of. Uh, when uh, Mr. Uh, Federwich came to talk to staff, this is what he was proposing. Um, he wants to use the property uh, or the, his project consists of buying, repairing, and selling used vehicles uh, to the general public uh, he will be using all he will be using the f the existing buildings in the front. Uh, the front of the, the the first building that's this one right here, they will be using as an office building for the for the car for the car dealership, and this accessory building will be used as the shop where he will be repairing all all vehicles. <clears throat> there will only be two people on site, well, which will be himself and his wife. There will be the only two employees on site. This is just the uh, the general plan, or sorry, the uh, zoning map, so we can see all the land, uh, the, all the zoning classifications within this general area. The property, like stated before, is commercial light. To the south, we have commercial, and adjacent, we have commercial light as well. Um, north of this property is uh, has a, a blended zoning of commercial light slash ag five. Um, within this property though, there is a, 
a line that clearly defines what portion of it is commercial heavy and what portion of it is at the Ag 5, which, and basically it's along this area. So this part of the property is Ag 5, this part of the property is commercial heavy. Here's a uh, site plan that uh, the applicant submitted for the conditional use permit. I know it's hard to see, so I made a, a, some, uh, some notes here on top just to indicate some of the verbiage that uh, Mr. Fredowich is uh, indicating here along the property. Um, so he's stating that the, the south driveway will be removed um, and the north driveway will be uh, updated uh, according to ADOT uh, requirements. Um, he is proposing a three foot wall along the front of the property and an existing well that's along here, along this area where he's planning that display the, the cars that are, being, that are being sold will be removed. So if you see here, we have the, the, the parking spaces where the cars will be displayed. And then we have um, additional parking over here where customers that are interested in buying vehicles can be able to park along the, the side of the commercial building. So uh, during, uh, we did have a, a meeting with Mr. Federwich, uh, a pre-application meeting. Um, and one of the comments that ADOT made, or one of their requirements was that he needed to make both driving aisles for ingress egress. Um, I believe Mr. Federwich has had conversations with, with ADOT and, and they've decided that they're just gonna close the smaller one, the one for just for ingress and just leave the one the one driveway that's already ingress egress. Um, obviously he's gonna have to update it per uh, a Dutch requirements now. I think the, the driveway is out of date so he's gonna have to make those those adjustments. Also um, for the UDO, um, all, all parking adjacent uh, State Route 89 does require a three foot wall, perimeter wall, and that's why he's indicating that on his site plan. So again, we're focusing on two separate um, uses that he's requesting here. First, he's requesting um, the, the use of new and used automobile sales, including trucks, recreational vehicle sales, um, which are allowed within the, within the commercialized zoning district. So first he wants the use of, of uh, auto sale, which is not a, a, a use that it's allowed by right in the commercialized zoning district. It's allowed, it's permitted with a conditional use permit. And that's what he's requiring the conditional use permit for the use of, to sell cars. The use of uh, the the repair of uh, of automobiles is not a a, a a use that's listed within the UDO in any zoning district, within the commercial light zoning district or the commercial heavy zoning district. Something that's a little bit similar in nature is uh, Section three point fifteen point B point thirteen, which is uh, list small engine repair and similar shop where all work is done inside enclosed walls and buildings. Um, the repair of vehicles obviously is not small engine. Automotive repair is not, a, is not like I stated before, is not a use that's identified within the UDO. Um, any zone, within any zoning district, but falls in line with a commercial light zoning district within the, with a conditional use permit or the commercial heavy zoning district. Um, staff uh, was more inclined for him to apply for a conditional use permit than going ahead and probably recommending commercial heavy on the property. I think uh, the commercial heavy zoning district will have a, a more of a neg negative impact on surrounding properties, including the, the residential property to, uh, to the east, and um, might also impact the residential use because there are, they are uh, planning to, con to continue the, the residential use on the property. So based upon our, our analysis, uh, staff 
just to go a little bit further back, sorry. There's some additional information for the project. Um, <clears throat> Mr. Mr. Federich held a neighborhood meeting on June 12th, 2019 here at Town Hall, and there was no uh, residents that attended that meeting. Um, just to notify the commission as well that after, if this uh, conditional use permit goes forward and is approved, um, that's not gonna be the last step. Mr. Federich will still need to go through site plan review and that'll be done at a staff level and at that point he will need to submit a, an updated uh, site plan where we'll be looking at all the improvements to the site that staff and ADOT is, is requiring as far as, um, well, let's go ahead with, 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 uh, with staff's recommendation. But these are uh, conditions that are, that are, uh, that staff is recommending is basically what we're gonna be reviewing during site plan review. And then we'll go into detail with these uh, conditions. So staff is recommending the Planning and Zoning Commission for a recommendation of approval to town council for approval of this conditional use permit to allow the use of auto repair. And uh, I should add some additional language here. Auto repair that is done within uh, an enclosed building and auto sales on a one acre site within the commercialized zoning district with the following conditions. Then no more than 10 vehicles will be on site at any given time for the sale and repair purposes. There you go. So again, staff is uh, recommending that Planning and Zoning Commission go forward with a recommendation of approval of this conditional use permit. Again, for two, the two uses that we've been discussing to allow the use of auto repair. And again, that this should be done within an enclosed building and the automobile sales within this one acre commercialized zoning district. Um, with the following conditions that, uh, condition number one, no more than 10 vehicles will be on site at any given time for the purpose of sale and repairs. Condition number two, the applicant will comply with all ADOT requirements. Number three, additional landscaping shall be located to the rear of the property, in this case, the, the east boundary line uh, ad adjacent to uh, residential usage, and that's within uh, one of the requirements within the UDO as well, within the landscaping section, that all commercial property adjacent to residential use shall be landscaped for uh, screening purposes. Uh, a three-foot wall shall be considered along uh, the front property line from street view screening purposes. Number five, all vehicle repairs shall be done within an enclosed building as stated before, and all vehicles not being displayed for sale shall be screened from public view. Um, let me just emphasize on this one. As you can see here, um, Probably this one right here, I know. I'm gonna enlarge it a little bit so we can all see it. All right, there we go. As we see here, this is a, a street view, again, from, um, from across, across the street from Sergio's Auto. And we see some vehicles along here. So what we don't wanna see is, from public view, we don't wanna see these cars parked. Um, maybe he's got, let's say he has five cars at a time for repair. We don't wanna see that from public view. So. That goes with the last condition that we want the applicant to screen that off. And uh, probably the best way to do that is uh, 
put some type of screening along here if he's going to be parking the vehicles here in the back that he's going to be repairing. So that goes in explanation to, to the last condition. So the applicant is here. If uh, any of the commissioners have any questions for him or for myself. Thank you, Alex. Anybody on the commission have questions for Alex while he's up at the podium? Just, just one question. Speak into the mic. <laughs> just one question, 38 parts, so. Um, Whoa, that's a loud. Alex, what do our other automotive, what's the consistency, uh, consistent zoning requirements? Are they all on CUPs for automotive repair? Or are a lot of them commercial heavy or commercial light? I, I know of two separate uh, properties on site right now that have auto auto sale. I believe both of them are within the commercial heavy zone industry. But the sales are commercial light, the sales part, right? The, our, the, the, uh, the UDO, um, if, you if, if a property has a zoning classification of commercial light, it is only allowed, uh, the usage is only allowed with a conditional use permit. If you're a commercial heavy, it's allowed by right. Okay. It just sounds like another blended, it, it just seems like, a, I, I find it hard to understand why we don't have a zoning ordinance that doesn't address specifically automotive. It's because that seems like a normal activity you would see in a town or city. So automotive repair actually is, 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 is the usage that's not listed within our code. Automotive sales is listed. Right. Something to think about for the future. The strange thing is, is automotive repair is defined in our definitions, but that list of that use is not listed as an allowed use in any of the zones. Uh, small engine repair is not defined, but it's listed as uh, approved uses in certain zones in, in the community. Is that something we're going to remedy in the future, try to get that narrowed down so it's consistent? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to okay. address that. And then the last thing, your uh, recommendation with number ten, uh, number one with about the 10 vehicles. That's 10 vehicles. Does that does not include the residents' vehicles for their own personal use? That does not include the, the, their own vehicles. I believe Mr. Frederich owns the vehicle and Mrs. Frederich owns the vehicle. I don't, I don't think that's going to be an issue. And, I mean, they park their vehicles all the way over here. Their residence is right here in the back. So I uh, I mean, with, with the screening, with, with that stipulation of the screening of, of, of the vehicles that are that are being repaired, I believe that's going to cover that for okay. their personal vehicles. Those are going to be screened as well. The, basically, the only thing that you're going to be able to see from Street View are the vehicles that are being displayed for, for sale that are ready for sale. And then the last question is, you, I can't quite, uh, is that a fence? Okay, so looking at C on this very video, on this very uh, picture, C, that back fence right there, all the way to the far east. Give me just a minute, right. sorry about that. All right. All right. Okay, so right in front of the yellow car. To yes. The east, that is in compliance with the, the screening on commercial light, right? At least a five foot, that would be okay right there? Yeah. Okay. But uh, again, our our code requires our section of the, of of the code requires landscaping within the the section of the landscaping code it requires that all properties adjacent to residential use shall be landscaped. So they'll be allowed to have the fence, but they'll also on their side will have to have some landscaping in the back. That's correct. And they and they already have landscaping. They have um if we go to the landscape, to uh, their site plan. Give me just a minute. He is showing all existing buildings and all existing landscaping. So he does have um, trees along here. Um, we're we're going to add, request additional landscaping besides what's already there. Thank you. Anybody else have questions? On the Parking, are those going to be de 10 designated parking spots defined or it's just open dirt lot or so um, people know where to go park? I mean, if someone comes into the lot, they're going to know where to go. Right. So we are going to require that we are going to require the applicant to stripe it. 
as far as the surface of it, I believe through uh, a feasibility meeting, uh, public or public works uh, requested a dust free surface. So whatever he chooses to do as part of the dust free surface, but we are going to require him to stripe it. So I guess my concern would be if there was ten vehicles and ten parking spots, where would the customers park? Again, he has uh, additional parking yeah. along. Now I see one spot there. Right. One parking spot per customer? There's three, I thought. There's three? Okay. And any additional landscaping in the front besides the two tr existing trees? Uh, no, we just required it in the back. I, I, we believe that the three foot wall that he's already, I, th I believe one of the pictures we showed that he's in the initial stages of, of locating that, and that that should be enough screening. And is the property um, to the east of the culvert, is that a dot easement? Or is to that the east. Property? There's a culvert there between the. Yeah, that is part of a dot. That's, that's part that's of a dot's right property. away. Yeah. Uh, why don't you hold on a second? We'll have you come up and speak. Anybody else have any other questions for Alex? Go ahead. Speak into the microphone. Okay. Uh, did I hear you say, or uh, was I incorrect in, in thinking that you said something about a well? Is there a well in the property? There is a well there. I'm, I'm not sure if it's in the actual well or if it's just for uh, design purposes. Okay. So there's no water? There. I believe not. Anybody else? Uh, one last question. Is it repair just for the sales vehicles, or are you doing retail repair I, we'll also? We'll wait for the owner to come up. You can ask him when he comes up. So the project, the project consists of he's going to be buying cars, repairing the cars, and selling them on site. So no retail repair. I can ask him. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, Alex. Um, this is a portion of the meeting where the owner can come up and speak to us. We'd like to hear from you, please. Just please state your name when you come to the microphone. Good afternoon. My name is Raymond Federwish, and uh, I'd just like to clarify a couple things right off the bat. Um, the auto repair is going to be just for my company vehicles. It's not going to be public auto repair for anyone to come in and me to repair their cars. Um, that well out front is just for aesthetics. There's no water. It's not even dug below the ground. It's just been there forever. Um, and then as long as, as far as the dust-free surface, we were encouraged to do a dust-free surface. Um, right now, I just have some AB actually sitting in a pile out there that we're going to start off with that, um, try to get some millings in afterwards, you know, as we can. Anybody have any further questions for the owner? Thank you, sir. Thank you. He will also open this portion of the meeting for public comment on this item. Is there anybody in the audience that would like to speak? Okay, we'll close that portion of the meeting. Um, I do have a question for Alex. On the dust-free parking lot, what consists of dust-free? Because AB is not dust-free. I would... And I will take that to um, Mr. Mulberry over here. Uh, Mr. Chairman, typically for dust-free surfaces, what we look for is the top two inches to have particle size between one-quarter inch and three-quarter inch. So it's more of a gravel than a base course. It doesn't have the fines in it. Um, there's other things you can do, such as chemical stabilization or millings or paving or chip seal. Um, but if you're talking just gravel, uh, that's what we look for. We, we don't really define that in our code. I stole that from Phoenix. So that's what we look for. Our code talks about surfaces similar to decomposed granite, but for sometimes that can get expensive. So the driveway gravel mix is a in my mind, a reasonable alternative for a dust-free surface for that top few inches. And I think he was correct, and that's how our code reads, that we encourage a dust-free surfaces. That's 
sounds like it's taken straight from the code. So, and he did mention that he was going to put millings down, so that sort of satisfies that portion then. Yeah, I think in the future he plans to try and get millings in there. So, I don't know if that's a definite. That sounds like when he can find them for the right price. All right. Thank you. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay, well, I'd like to move forward and entertain a motion, please. I think one clarification, because uh, Alex mentioned it earlier, and I don't think it was included on the recommendation about enclosed building. It, it, it is. It's it is. Condition. It's an item five. Right. Oh, okay. You did add it. Okay. All right. I will make a motion. Everybody's holding out. It looks like I'm the reader here. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll make a recommendation uh, that we, the Planning and Zoning Commission, forward a recommendation of approval to the town council to approve a conditional use permit to allow the use of an automotive repair and automotive uh, automobile sales on a one acre site within a commercial light zoning district for one acre site within the following conditions. No more than 10 vehicles will be on a site at any given time for sale or repair purposes. Applicant will comply with all ADOT requirements. Additional landscaping shall be located to the rear of the property abutting residential usage. A three foot wall shall be constructed along the front property line for street, viewing, street view screening purposes. All vehicle repairs shall be done within an enclosed building. And number six, all vehicles not being displayed for sale shall be screened from the public. Okay, we have a motion, do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Any questions, any comments? Okay, so we'll vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Good luck in your business. Item seven, non-public hearing action items. Do we have any of these tonight? I just want to make one point up. I just want to say the U.S. women's national team's going to the World Cup finals. Oh, good for us. They, they beat England today, two to one. Wow. That is important. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so now we've moved out of that. Um, we have item eight, any discussion items? We have no discussion items, and this comes to item nine, public comments. It's a call to the public as an opportunity for the public to address the commission on any issue within the jurisdiction of the commission that is not on the agenda. Public comment is encouraged. Individuals are limited to speak for three minutes. So is there anybody in the public that would like to speak about something that is not on the agenda that we can do something about? Seeing no action on that, we'll move out of that one and go to item 10, which is a motion to adjourn. I make a motion that we adjourn. We have a second. A second here. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carried and the meeting is over. Thank you, Commission. Thank you, town staff, for your.